Hi guys, it's Yaya and welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the also classic body butter. Today I wanted to give you guys a few little tips and just do a couple of troubleshooting. For those who already follow me, this would be a quick review on how to make a fluffy, smooth, yummy body butter. And for those who are beginners or are new to my channel, this will be an easy tutorial for you to follow so you can learn exactly how to make your body butter, okay? To make the perfect body butter, you need the perfect ingredients. Today's ingredients were gifted by Oslov Organics. Thank you, Oslov Organics, for sponsoring this video. To welcome the fall and to jumpstart the holiday season, Oslov Organics is giving away two 12 ounce rose hip oils. For a chance to win, check the description box down below. So what's the hype about rosehip oil and why should you want it? Rosehip oil is jam-packed with vitamin A and vitamin C. Both of these vitamins are widely sought out for their healing properties. Vitamin C can help to prevent dry skin. It can also help with the healing of wounds, while vitamin A can help with hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, sun damage, and also acne. So today we're gonna be pairing this wonderful oil with other ingredients from Oz of Organics to make the perfect whipped body butter, okay? So let's jump right into this video, how to make whipped body butter. Finding the right combination of soft butters and hard butters can really determine whether your butter will be fluffy and soft versus hard and stiff, okay? So I'm gonna be giving you the answers and also the full list of ingredients and measurements down in the description box below. So let's just start with step one. The first step is to simply gather up the butters you want to use and melt them down, okay? So I'm gonna be using a significant amount of mango butter because it's a semi-soft butter, is a lot softer than cocoa butter. So this is the one you want the most of in order for your butter to be soft and, and smooth, okay? Now we're gonna use just a little bit of cocoa butter. It is a much harder butter, but that's what's gonna give your body butter stability and it's gonna make it pipeable and it's gonna make it fluffy, okay? So you do want a little bit, just a little bit of the harder butters and you can use cocoa butter or other butters like that to kind of balance out the softer butters especially when you're using liquid oils which can loosen up your body butter and it won't fluff up and be as thick and fluffy as you like it to be okay so I find that mango butter and cocoa butter work perfectly for the perfect fluffy body butter okay to melt down your butters just pour about a cup and a half of water into a pan and then make sure that your butters are in a heat safe container just place the container into the pan of water and let it heat up on the stove for about 10 minutes on low heat or longer if you're making a larger batch okay once your butters have melted down just sit that to the side we're going to go ahead and focus on our oils so for step two all you have to do is add your liquid oils however adding too much or too little can definitely be detrimental to your body butter okay so what i like to do is i like to take a little less than half of my liquid oils and just sit it to the side so that's what i'm going to do with my rose hip oil today i'm going to sit it to the side for later and then i'm going to bring it back and i'm going to show you guys exactly why i did that for my base oil i'm using fractionated coconut oil because it is highly stable it stays in the liquid form and it's less likely to oxidize okay fractionated coconut oil is filled with antioxidants and it is widely used in many skincare and hair care products it is truly a universal carrier oil so for the easy part, just go ahead and pour your fractionated coconut oil directly into your melted butters. Because the butters are still warm, it's gonna be easier to dissolve your coconut oil into the mixture. All right, so once you mix your coconut oil into your butters, you can go ahead and place it into a separate container or you can keep it in the same container, whichever one you're comfortable with whipping up your butter once it's out of the freezer, okay? So just go ahead and cover that up with some saran wrap and place it in the freezer for usually around 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how large or small your batch is. Once your butter is solid or semi-solid, you can go ahead and whip it up. So right out of the freezer, this is what our butter is looking like. 
And you can see that the middle is still a little soft. That's perfectly fine. The hardest part is going to be on the outside. And this is also going to be the hardest part to whip up. The reason being is that I'm using a glass bowl. This bowl holds the cooler temperature for much longer. You don't want your butters to warm up too quickly because then it's going to liquefy basically. And you're not going to get that fluffy smooth butter that you're looking for. Okay. So I actually kind of recommend a glass bowl in a sense. The only downside to using a glass bowl is that some butters solidify at different rates so especially cocoa butter it has a higher melting point therefore as the temperature comes down it solidifies the fastest this can leave hard little beads of cocoa butter that makes your butter looks grainy and not smooth to fix this we're just adding more liquid oils that's it and it's not necessarily adding additional oil because we're using the rose hip oil from earlier so it's still a part of the recipe we just added it later instead of earlier okay this is going to allow us to blend in that liquid oil and smooth out any of those little bumps that were there and really whip them out into a smooth fluffy creamy body butter now i highly recommend a stand mixer for this method because a stand mixer does the same job in half the time. I can whip up this body butter into a smooth, creamy body butter in literally less than 30 minutes versus using a hand mixer. Guys, I'm just gonna be honest with you. This took hours, okay? Like whipping and whipping and letting it sit and whipping some more to really work it out into a fluffy, thick, smooth butter, okay? So a stand mixer definitely will be beneficial but I wanted to use the mixer just to show you guys that you can do it with the hand mixer it's just gonna take a lot of muscle and it's gonna take a lot of time so you're probably wondering why not just remelt it down and refreeze it and re-whip it up to save some trouble well I wanted to make this as simple and as easy as possible and how easy is it to just add more oils that's pretty simple to me and I think that's mm, a little better than remelting your butters down, especially when you're dealing with larger batches. Now, if you're making a really small batch, then yeah, remelting it down would probably be the easiest thing, but also you could end up with the same results. Another reason is a lot of people try to avoid too much heat with their natural butters. You wanna introduce the least amount of heat as possible, so that could be another reason as well. And also, if you do not want to use a glass bowl, you definitely don't have to. You can also sit whatever bowl that you are using on top of another bowl that has ice in it. This can help keep the mixture cool while you're whipping it up, resulting in a fluffier, more airy, beautiful whipped body butter. All right, to finish off my body butter, I'm adding arrowroot powder. This is a starch that's going to cut back some of the greasy feel of your body butter. Another way to cut back the greasy feel of your body butter and make sure that it absorbs quickly in your skin is to use oils that are lightweight and that absorb fast. If you use heavier oils in your body butter, then you may find it necessary to use arrowroot powder. Okay, so the le the more lightweight your oils are, the less necessary arrowroot powder is, okay? Next, I'm gonna be adding some vitamin E. Vitamin E is very important, especially when you're making uh, a formula that is basically 100% oils. You need uh, vitamin E to help fight oxidation. This will basically help your oils and your butters not go rancid, so it improves the shelf life and stability of your body butter. However, it is not a preservative. I'm not adding a preservative today. I'm just gonna make sure I avoid any water getting into this product. Um, if you use a jar, make sure you use a spoon to get your body butter out to not introduce any moisture or water to your body butter. And that way it's safe for use at home without a preservative. Um, but if you feel it necessary to add a preservative, just make sure it's one that is oil soluble, okay? All right, I'm also adding a fragrance oil. This is definitely not necessary. You can have a completely unscented body butter if you like. I'm just adding a fragrance oil because I just love things that smell amazing. I use birthday cake fragrance oil, but you can also use uh, essential oil, whichever you prefer. Uh, but yeah, I think I made a mistake using birthday cake because this already looks good enough to eat. Guys, please do not eat the body butter. Do not, even though it smells so good and it looks like frosting, 
do not eat okay okay you guys so we're gonna separate our body butter into two separate portions the reason being is that i'm going to add mica to this section i know some people don't like to use mica in their body butters that's perfectly fine but i know there are some people who do like to use mica so i'm adding just a little bit here actually i ended up using a lot because i couldn't really get the color that i was looking for which usually happens with mica and that's okay <laughs> so anyway um i started off with this really light fluffy pink color and i should have just stayed with that but um i did end up adding a little darker red color to it and i got more like this rosy color which also is very beautiful um i like them both actually i don't really have any problems with either one of them but i was really trying to do like a comparison between the little bit of colorant that came from the rose hip oil if you guys didn't notice the rose hip oil definitely gave this body butter a little extra tint versus being straight white and i think that's also just a really great bonus it's really hard to find natural colorants out there um so i was just trying to compare those two but i end up making this one just a little too dark pink <laughs> but i absolutely love how it came out i think this is such a beautiful color it pipes like butter it's just so smooth and pretty oh my gosh you guys just love it so anyway you guys how would you use this butter all you have to do is use a very tiny amount just the littlest amount and just rub it into your skin gently for really soft supple skin it absorbs fast you guys i'm telling you this is the perfect body butter it's not greasy it's going to absorb quickly and it feels like powder on your skin it's so amazing and i really feel like you guys are going to enjoy this recipe i hope you did you know and i hope you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and don't forget the giveaway is open right now go down to the description box down below and find out how you can enter in for a chance to win the rose hip oil it's a 12 ounce bottle so it's going to last you a good long time and you can use it as is on your skin on your face on your nails it is completely universal you guys you don't want to miss this opportunity and yeah leave me some comments down below if you have any questions about anything we went over in the video today don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know as soon as i upload you guys i try to answer as many questions as i can but usually it's first come all right so anyway follow me on instagram as well yaya diy creations and i'll see you in the next one bye Bye.